Exam review question related to IUPAC nomenclature. On the left, draw the line and go structures of the compounds given below. And on the right, we provide the IUPAC name for the structures given. And we're told we can use common names for common alkyl substituents. Let's get into it. So with 1A, we have meso 234 pentane. So in order to systematically approach the problem, let's break it up into pieces. Let's forget about 2, 3, 3, 4. Let's forget about meso. We'll tackle that later and just focus on the parent compound, which is pentane. So let's draw pentane. So with meso compounds, there are two dead giveaways. For one, there is a plane of symmetry. Or two, the chiral centers have opposite stereochemical designations. So let's take a look. We have bromines at carbon 2, two of them at 3, one of them at 4. So already, I imagine the plane of symmetry would be right here, down carbon 3. But let's draw this out. So we have a bromine here. Let's just arbitrarily put it on a wedge. It could go on a dash. But if I put it on a wedge here, that means at carbon 4, it must go on a wedge as well. And then we put two bromines on carbon 3. Now what's sort of implicit in this structure is that the chiral centers are carbon 2 and carbon 4. Carbon 3 isn't chiral because when you look at the different groups, these two groups coming off to the left and right are the same, and these two bromines are the same. So the definition of a chiral center is that the carbon, or the stereogenic carbon, has four different substituents. That's not the case at 3, it is at 2 and 4. So if we imagine a plane of symmetry directly down the middle of the compound, it really would be meso because towards the left, we have a two carbon fragment with a bromine on a wedge, and the same thing goes for the right. So that's really the meso compound, but let's take it further and prove it. Remember, the two chiral centers, two and four, should have opposite stereochemical designations. So according to kahn ingold prelog rules, at carbon two, bromine will take highest priority, this group would take second priority, the methyl group out here would take third priority, and the hydrogen hiding right here takes last and lowest priority. Now in terms of Conningold prelog at carbon four, the prioritization is the same. Bromine takes highest priority, the hydrogen back here takes lowest priority, and the methyl takes third priority, the group coming off of this carbon here takes second. We draw an arrow from 1 to 2 to 3. It's clockwise, so indeed it is R. So even though I have chiral centers at 2 and 4, overall the compound is achiral. And the reason is, well, for one, we have a plane of symmetry, and two, at the two different chiral centers, we have opposite stereochemical designations. If we flip this molecule, the molecule stays the same, and we can prove that with SIP rules. We know that carbon-3 is achiral, but I can still draw wedges and dashes, like so. But now at carbons 2 and 4, the bromines are on dashes. And if we read this compound according to kahn ingold prelog, we'll find out that it's still S and R at carbons 2 and 4. So we prove that even if we flip the molecule, 2 remains S, 4 remains R, so it really is meso. So now with B, we have 1S, 2R, 2 isopropyl, 4,4-dimethyl, cyclohexan-1-ol. It's a handful, but we can tackle it piece by piece. So we know we have a cyclohexane, so let's draw that out first. So once we've done that, we just draw on our substituents. So at carbon-4, we have two methyl groups. We know it's not chiral because it's not indicated here in parentheses, so we can just draw those out on lines. At carbon-1, we have a hydroxyl group, as indicated here, hexan-1-ol. That means there's an OH at carbon-1. Let's just put it on a wedge for now. And at carbon-2, we have an isopropyl group. Let's put that on a wedge as well. So the reason why I advocate putting the two substituents that are chiral on wedges first is because the hydrogens project towards the back. 
that makes reading stereochemistry really easy. At carbon 1, the OH takes first priority. If we move towards the left here and towards the right here, we find that this has second priority. The third highest priority is here. And lastly, hydrogen. We draw an arrow from 1 to 2 to 6. It's going in a counterclockwise motion, so indeed it's S. So now at carbon 2, we do the same thing. Let's emerge from the chiral center. We have a carbon here, we have a carbon here, and we have a carbon here. We have a three-way tie, so let's break it. Let's draw an arrow from 1 to 2 to 3 in our minds. It's S, and that violates the structure here, so we have to replace the wedge with the dash. 1S, 2R, 2 isopropyl, 4,4-dimethyl, cyclohexan, 1-ol. So with this hydrocarbon here, the key is to find the longest carbon chain. And if you were to analyze this chain down here, or this one going this way, you would find that starting here with carbon 1 would lead you to a 10 carbon chain right here. So that means we have decane as the parent compound. And now we just analyze what substituents we have. So we only have two substituents coming off of carbon 5. We have a methyl group and we have a sec butyl group here. Remember the structure for a sec butyl group is just like it's drawn here where the R group attaches to a secondary carbon where it's bound to two other carbons. So the name for this compound would be 5 open parentheses sec butyl 5 methyl decane. Here we have a bicyclo compound, so that's the first thing we should take note of. And then we count up all the carbons to make sure we have the correct parent compound. So arbitrarily, I can start here at 1 and continue to number all the carbons. So we have 11 compounds, so it will be a bicyclo undecane to indicate 11 carbons. Now the nomenclature with bicyclo compounds has everything to do with the bridgehead here. So all we do from here is proceed out of the bridgehead carbon and come right back to the bridge in all possible ways. So that's just a convoluted way of saying you move down here, you move up here, and you go this direction, and you count how many carbons you encounter on the way. So let's say I start going to the right. Well, I encounter one carbon here one carbon here, and I'm right back to my bridge. So I encountered two carbons. If I go onto the bridge, I encounter one, two, three, and I'm right back. And let's go towards the left. We start here, one, two, three, four, and I'm right back. So I encountered four. All we do then is put these in numerical order, place them in brackets, use our parent compound name, and we're done. So the final name is bicyclo 432 undecane.